Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, and I got picked on a lot. And as a result, I had to take not one style of martial arts. I had to take like three to like maybe six or seven styles of martial arts. And I had to fight back. That's the difference between standing up for yourself. Now, being overly aggressive is trying to punk anyone. Men, women, young, old, black or white. You know, you try to punk women and children. You try to punk senior citizens. That's being overly aggressive. That is trying to exert your dominance on everyone. Now, when a woman gets punked and bullied in junior high, high school, college, work, um, she starts to get some form of psychological damage to the brain to the point where she's not even aware that she's been mentally damaged. So if it's four years in high school, four years in college, four plus four is eight, that's eight years that she's being punked and bullied. And when she gets into the real world, she wants to be the bully and attack everyone who fails to understand her anger and her rage. And there's a lot of white women, black women, and Mexican women who get punked and bullied all throughout their life. You know, usually if someone's from Texas, it happens a lot. Out in Texas, they want you to fight for yourself. They don't like to always come to your rescue and save the day. They want you to learn how to fight. So a lot of them have to learn how to do boxing, mixed martial arts, because they get punked so much. Like, if a girl is between four foot one to five foot five or five foot six, maybe five foot seven, and she gets punked or bullied by a man that's between five foot eleven to six foot eight close to seven feet tall, um, it's going to have a powerful mental effect on her brain for the rest of her life. Because it's going to be hard for her to make the distinction between a person who's being nice, too nice, overly aggressive, or too aggressive. It's going to be hard for her to make that distinction. Um, And she may not trust you. So let's say you meet a girl at work. And let's say this girl doesn't reveal to you right away she's been punked or bullied. So some girls might say, I could hold a grudge that can last weeks. Or I could hold a grudge that's three months or six months. I can hold a grudge that's two to three years. When when people say the girls have all these tattoos and these body piercings and they listen to loud rock music, it goes much further and much deeper in the rabbit hole than you think. If you're going off of movies and television depictions, that's the wrong interpretation. Because the movies and the TV show only shows 30, 40, maybe 50% of the problem. In the real world, we don't know how far that goes. We don't know if they got abused at home by their parents or grandparents. We don't know if their uncle or auntie abused them. We don't know what happened when they got punked and bullied in junior high and high school. And a lot of these women have a lot of anger, a lot of rage. And this is how some of these women become narcissistic, where they just need the attention seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And if they don't get that attention, you're going to see the anger and the rage come to the surface because they feel like you're ignoring them. They feel like that when they come home, if they're in a family of six kids or seven or eight kids and the most popular kid or the most loved kid gets 80 to 85 percent of the attention that they don't get when they're at home they're going to seek that attention in junior high and high school and if they're not getting that attention in junior high and high school they're going to try to get it by the time they go to college so then by the time the girl is 23 24 25 years old if she still feels like she's not getting the attention she'll act out at work To get that attention. She don't care if it's good attention, bad attention, or a combination of the two. Now, guys guys like me and you, we kind of fall into a category of called bad circumstances. Where we don't realize that the girl wants attention. To the point where it's detrimental to our health. To her health. You know, you know how to say nice guys and good guys are a potential target for women women who are like this? Because... We try to become what they call problem solvers. We try to solve problems logically. We try to use math and science to fix the problem. 
And these women don't necessarily want the problem fixed just quite yet. They want the attention. They rather get the attention than you fixing it. You fixing it in their mind subconsciously because they're mentally damaged. They think you're trying to make sure they don't get no attention. So she rather for the problem to continue than for you to try to fix it. You trying to fix it results in her having to attack you because you won't let the problem persist. She wants the problem to go away, but not when you or I want it to go away. Because if it goes away so fast, then she creates another series of challenges for me and you to deal with. Because her narcissistic behavior will not allow her to have no true peace. Now, when women get beat up and abused by men, like bad boys or players... Um, that is another variation on how women become imprinted and they take on the characteristics of another man. Usually you'll be like, this woman tried to punk me. This woman tried to bully me. And you'll be trying to figure out why she's trying to act like a man. Why she's trying to be so hard and tough. You know, the foul language, you know, the smoking, the drinking, the doing the drugs. All of those are characteristics of a man. So it's not always she has sex with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten men. That is the most popular way to talk about on the internet. What most men don't want to talk about on the internet is what happens if a woman gets bullied too many times by a man. Then that woman's going to want power and control and want to bully other people. She'll go from trying to bully other women to trying to get her kicks off of trying to bully a man. Because people taking advantage of her because she's too short. There's that, the first problem. She has a Napoleon complex. People don't take me serious because I'm too short. So she gets mad because they always punk her because she's short. If she tries to talk highly intelligent, that's the second reason why she gets bullied. So she gets mad because she can't have an opinion of her own. So then her narcissistic behavior is, I want to hurt people who don't let me express how I feel. So I want to get you because you talk intelligent, but I can't do it. This is when you hear people say the girl's indifferent. Because the girl's mad because when she was trying to talk intelligently, people bullied her. You know, you look at math class or in lunch, or should I say math or English. The most smartest girl in the class usually is the one who end up becoming the narcissistic woman later in life. So when you see her in college or at work, she may be the best worker, but she's also narcissistic because she feels like that because she does such a great job, I should get some acknowledgement, some attention. And when she doesn't get it, her anger and rage will come up to the surface. You could accidentally say something or do something stupid by her account. And she can lash out in anger and rage because you failed her expectations. Like, let's say you try to date a girl, right? doesn't matter if it's a black woman, white woman, or a Mexican woman that you find physically sexually attractive. And let's say that she tell you that uh, I like to go to 7-Eleven, I like fruit starburst, and I like a Gatorade. And let's say they run out of Gatorade. Well, you buy a Powerade or you buy some Coca-Cola or Pepsi and she look at you in disgust like, why are you buying the complete opposite? Oh, they ran out or it costs too much. And she'll only take it because she's thirsty, but you don't know. And then you have friends who know what's wrong with her, but they don't want to tell her personal business to you because they don't know you very well. And let's say you do one thing by accident that she don't like. Well, now that you've done that one mistake, now in her head, she's afraid you might make two mistakes, three mistakes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mistakes. You just made one mistake, but now she thinks you're going to make a total of 10 to 11 mistakes. So now she has no choice but to turn into a bully on you. And then this is when you hear doctors, not necessarily a scientist, but you hear a doctor tell you, well, at that point, you ain't got no choice but to leave the girl alone because... She'll keep trying to punk and bully you as if she's a man so she can get her kicks off of power and control. Like if something, like if there's a car accident, right, and she gets excited because there's a car crash, usually that's the first sign that she's 
mentally messed up in the head. She gets off on it. If she starts to insinuate to you in a conversation that she wants to do something that's destructive, well, that's the second sign that you might, might you may not be in trouble, but people around you might be in trouble. And I've been in some situations where I've seen